we see is a clear and disgusting oppression of women in many forms. Now, we all know the kind of women oppression that we see by putting them under a wage gap, under a, a, the, glass, the glass ceiling, that they cannot come any further in the corporations. However, what we see here is a greater infringement of the rights of choice by degrading the idea of motherhood in and of itself and in relation to having a career. What's our problem here, aside government, in this debate? First, is that there is this notion in the society, is that have, have choosing motherhood over choosing a career, that this is a, in, that this is a disregard of her freedom of choice. Why? Because they see that even the mothers who personally choose to be uh, the women who choose to be mothers over having a career, they see them as oppressed by the situation and by the patriarchy, and they see that mothers, that women should not be, uh, should not choose to be mothers over having a career because this is what they should be doing to prove that they are equal to men. We completely disagree to that point. Why? Because it results in significant infringement of the woman's freedom of choice. How does that happen? When even if a woman wants to be a mother, she will, she will prioritize her career. Why? Because she will be forced to conform with the society. Why that will happen? Because she doesn't want to feel like she's less than anyone in that society. And that's what's happened when people look at women who choose to be mothers with, as they're being oppressed. As That is to say that they are, they, their power is being taken from them, their voice is being taken away from them and that they should not do this and they should become more open in the, in the, in the job market and they fo should focus more on their career because this is how they could actually contribute to the society. We completely disagree. Why, why does that happen? First, we believe that women can contribute to the society in more than one way, by being a mother or by having a career or actually by having by doing both because being a mother doesn't negate that you can have a career how does that work first we see but first let's on 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 the uh, on the point of a career why does anyone choose to have a career in the first place to make money to uh, achieve uh, self-actualization and to prove that they can contribute something beneficial for the society. First, on the point of making money and why this is important, because it shows independence from, from anyone else, that they don't need anyone to, to give them money to support their life. And we see that there is no contradiction between having a career and being a mother. Why? As we see now with the technologi technological advancement, there is a lot of ways that mothers can work from home through a cyber conferences, they can work uh, online, there is a lot of things that they can still do while if they took a maternity leave. And, yes, before moving, I'll take How do you define motherhood and a fulfilling experience? Well, as, I, as it's obviously explained, motherhood is the whole process of having a child, staying and caring for that child to raise a a productive individual for the society and why this is an, a fulfilling experience I'll explain first because it, it shows how much contributions mothers can give to the society just because she's not working and she's not putting any tangible productions that, that people around her can see this is a long term contribution to the society why is that because under the status quo, we see, as I mentioned before in my speech, women are being oppressed. So the, the amount of contribution women in our current day can, can give to the society, no matter how fast we say that this society is improving, it's still limited to some amount. However, if she raises children in a proper way, by having enough time and providing them with a lot of care that we know side opposition will say oh but women should not be the main caregivers in in the family and we will exactly refute and prove them why this is wrong but first let back to my point that the long-term contribution that they give is by providing beneficial and productive individual let it be 
Let it be girls who know their value in society and know that they can choose whatever experience that can make them feel better about themselves and that they should not be oppressed by anyone. Let it be the patriarchy or the, or the society itself that tells them that you need to, a job, a six, uh, a six to five job to prove that you're worthy and you're contributing to the society. Why? Because pr producing individual healthy and a, a sure. functional individual in the society through the care and a, uh, the nourishment of this of, uh, from the mother that will be more beneficial for the society in the long term and in the short term as well. How does that work? We believe that even if, even if she had girls, she can raise them so that in the future they can shatter these limitations that is put on women in our society and if she raises men then she actually benefits more from the privileged status that these men have in the society by actually having them so so she's raising generations that would remove the the uh, the limitations placed on women in our society so in the future we wouldn't need to have such a debate because we will not have this oppression that, that women are put under by saying that they should not be uh, mothers just because having a career is much more important than this. What have I shown you in this debate so far? First, the oppression that side government, that, that side opposition is trying to defend here is that the social idea that women are less then uh, the, the, the motherhood is less than having a career, which we object and we, we showed you how this is not true. But in fact, it can be equally contributing to, to the society or actually on the long run, it's going to be more contributing to the society. And how, the, how our, our model will increase the self-esteem of women and it will create better generation for the future that will shatter the limits that put on, on women under the status quo for these reasons we proudly propose. Right. We tell you that when women have babies they actually have, a, a, they actually, they're restricted in their, uh, in their, in their, uh, their choices get restricted. They don't know, they have to make choices on the behalf of their children rather than themselves, right? And uh, since they don't know what being a woman uh, is like, I'm going to tell you what, what, what happens when women have children. And that is exactly what we're going to do as opposition, right? So but before we move on, let, let, uh, uh, we would like to share, we would like to ask the side, uh, side government some questions. Firstly, we, don't, we still don't understand what motherhood is. If it's about having a child and staying home and taking care of it, uh, taking care of the child, then do then do do our adoptive parents not children not 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 uh, our adoptive mothers not mothers our gay parents not mothers we still don't understand their notion of motherhood we still don't know what a fulfilling experience is because they never de uh, defined that and came up and made an entire case about what's a fulfilling experience and what's not but we still don't because we had no definition from them we don't know so I'll tell you for, we believe that fulfilling a fulfilling experience is something which is what side opposition believes. We believe that a fulfilling experience is something that is based on choice, where you're allowed to make the choices that will make you eventually that will eventually make you happy. And that is, we believe, what gives any human being a fulfilling experience. And we believe when you have the narrative that motherhood is a fulfilling is a fulfilling experience which perpetuates within a society, then it's going to take away that choice from you because it's going to tell you one entire one experience and it's going to give you a one set notion of what is going to be fulfilling for you and what is not going to be fulfilling for you and that we believe is essentially problematic, right? So what are the two things that I, uh, a pro proposition argued for? The first that are argued about uh, argued for freedom of choice and how these women are not going to, uh, how these women are not going to be able to have, uh, not, not have children because well, they're told that you're not, you know, you don't have job. We don't, we don't think that's how it works. We, we, we actually believe how we actually believe that it works in a quite opposite direction, right? We believe that when you're told that, like. A fulfilling experience for you is having children. You're actually not going to have career options, and you're not going to be able to have a career just because someone is telling you that that is a fulfilling experience for you. And we believe having that narrative and telling them is something that you're you're actually propagating against and still doing in the first place. If there's a perpetuating uh, a perpetuating notion within society that having a career is the better and fulfill, more fulfilling experience, then you're also doing the same thing by going uh, on the opposite and telling them, oh well, no, wait, motherhood is the for more fulfilling experience.
experience for you. So we believe that's problematic. We believe if you let them decide what they want to do, if they want to do either or both, it's up to them. And that choice is what give, will eventually give them the fulfilling experience and not you telling them what's a more fulfilling experience. Thank you, sir. No. Uh, secondly, they talk to you about how women contribute to society by having children and that's what makes it a, it's a long-term contribution and that's what makes it a fulfilling experience, right? Firstly, we tell you, A, not everyone contributes to society and just because this, if, if I am a person who wanted to smoke all my life and smoked all my life, I had a fulfilling experience because that's all I wanted to do in my life. But that doesn't mean I was a contributing person within society. Not everyone who has a fulfilling experience ha contributes to society, right? And secondly, they talk to you about how women, if they if they had children, then they're contributing to society by raising them. We don't believe that, that we, and, and we believe that's essentially problematic that because you're placing the value of a woman on the child that they have and the child that they bear, and that's essentially problematic, right? It's And yes, we will tell you again that women is not the only child giver, but it's not even about that. It's about the value of the woman. The value of the woman is not based on the child she has. It's not based on the uh, her, her, in, her, her self-esteem and her everything that she does her own fulfilling experience is not based on the child that she bears. Because even if I'm a mother and my child grows up to be the best person in the world and takes over the world or whatever, it's not going to be my fulfilling experience because his experience was not my experience and I had to give up a lot of choices in the way of making that person the best person in the world, right? So which brings me on to my own lines of arguments. Madam. Firstly, I'll tell you about how there are external conditions that make motherhood a fulfilling experience and then I'll tell you about how this entire narrative is a patriarchal construct that actually perpetuates oppression within society, right? So the first idea, external conditions that requ are required to make a mother motherhood a fulfilling experience. Even if we agree to you, even if we agree that some motherhood for many people is a fulfilling experience, if, even if we agree to that narrative, we tell you that motherhood in itself is not the fulfilling experience. Just if, if I'm a mother who has a baby and, I, and I, don't have mon I don't have money, I don't have a house, I don't have a partner, that will not give me a fulfilling experience. What makes my motherhood a fulfilling experience experience for me even if we if this is an argument based on their presumptions that for someone who's for whom a motherhood is a fulfilling experience right but for them it also depends on their partner it's all it also depends on their circumstances it also depends on their money it, it depends on the choices that they make all of those things combined makes the fulfilling experience it's not just a mother what about someone who got raped and has a child that their motherhood experience is not going to be the most fulfilling experience in the world and we believe that's problematic and they need to cater to all those all those levels and also, if you do agree to, if you do say that motherhood then is a fulfilling experience, and this nuclear family thing where, where you have, where you have like motherhood and it's like you know it's a it's it's the best thing in society, then we believe you're also on the next level degrading gay, gay parents. You're also degrading parents with no children as a whole because you're telling them, oh wait, you're never going to be able to have a fulfilling experience because you're never going to be a mother. You're never going to be. You're never going to have children, right? So we believe those things are essentially essentially problematic. Which brings me on to my second line of argument about how this is a patriarchal concept, concept used in developing countries to make sure women have more children. And that is exactly what their side pro proposition was doing. They were base placing the value of women on the basis of how many children they have. And that is exactly what happens in a patriarchal society, right? The, when you, when, it, when the idea that how the that motherhood is going to be the best experience in your life is reiterated to a person living in a patriarchal society, they start accepting that idea and they start closing a lot of options they might want in their lives. If I'm, a, if I'm a person living in a patriarchal society and I'm told by my mother, by my grandmother, by my sisters that the best experience I'm going to have in my life is, um, is, is motherhood, I'm going to stop actually looking into things that actually make me happy because I know I have to be a mother so I can't go abroad and study, so I can't do this and I can't do that. It emphasizes all kind of uh, it restricts choices on many levels it emphasizes things like uh, it, it, thing, it, it pressurizes the person to get married because you are you want to have that uh, you want to have that experience as soon as you can and we believe that's problematic it emphasizes notions of virginity which which might not be my choice but are a choice that are imposed to me from society and we believe that is problematic so we believe having this notion is is what is perpetuating oppression within society and it's not the other way around and we're very very let me just clarify something for side opposition which they have clearly misunderstood. Our, our stance is not to say that motherhood is the ultimate fulfilling experience. There is no other fulfilling experience in this life apart from motherhood. We are just saying 
that motherhood as an experience in itself is fulfilling. And we are not demeaning other experiences in life. We are not demeaning anyone else. We are just trying to trying to realize the esteem that, that this process, this motherhood actually holds. Right, to start off with some refutations that the side opposition, uh, uh, refuting some points that side opposition brought up. Um, so uh, they said that we are, like I mentioned, they mentioned that we are uh, defining a one set notion of what a fulfilling experience is. And just to clarify, we are not telling uh, women that they have to stay at home and have babies and parents need kids to go through a fulfilling experience in life. We are just saying that if they choose that route, if they wish to stay home or if they wish to have children other than having kids, it is perfectly acceptable for them to do that. Right. Another, another point that they mentioned, uh, she said, are gay parents not mothers? Right. Well, and under the status quo that we currently have, the stigma is against women in particular. Women in particular are demeaned, they are looked down upon when they choose to not go out and be financially independent and when they choose to stay at home and have kids, right? And this is what we are depending, this is what we are defending. Um, furthermore, uh, she said that mothers, uh, uh, the, ch the child that a mother has when he grows up and, and if he were to take over the world, that experience is not the mother's experience. We beg to differ greatly because they clearly do not understand the emotional bond that exists between a mother and her kid. The mother is emotionally and physically invested in that kid. She has gone through a massive deal to not only oh, to not only bring that child into this world, but also to nourish him and to raise that individual to be who he is, to, to bring him to that level where he is able to be successful. And so the success of the kid is is directly equated to the success of the mother and it should not be seen as anything else. No, thank you. Right, so to talk about why it's, um, why women shouldn't, this motherhood isn't uh, a way of making contribution to society and not why everyone doesn't make contribution to society, right? I would like to get on to my first main point is that um, we, no matter how financially independent or um, whatever levels of independence we achieve in our lives, we are not independent from each other. We are socially dependent beings in this world. And we rely on the satisfaction that we are contributing to the society to make it a better place for everyone in general to live in, right? And so if a woman is choosing to, to have a kid and to nourish that individual, to provide an individual who will be productive to the future society, that is her satisfaction, that is her contribution to the society. And they need to understand this, that this is something that is necessary for a person to attain. Right, furthermore, um, to talk about why women should, um, it is more beneficial for them to have careers and, and to be uh, successful in that regard than to have children and why that having children is apparently not a good thing, right? So under the status quo, there is a high level of gender inequality in the workplace. Thus, it hinders the development and the rise of females in the workplace. Um, so if a woman is stuck between having a kid and, and she has this pressure on her to go out and prove that, uh, that she can succeed in, in the workplace, well, then you end up in a situation where the woman is stuck in, in the middle of two grounds. She's not, um, she's not striving for financial independence. She's not able to take care of her kid properly. And so you just have a, have a situation where the mother really does not feel good about herself because she is ha being highly degraded because of the choices that she makes and this is something that we need to set straight. Um, so women instead, what the point is that the women instead can choose to make their contribution in society by nourishing individuals, as I mentioned, who will, f who will be productive to the future prospects of our society. Oh, thank you. If I'm unemployed because I am a mother, is my motherhood a fulfilling experience for me and I want to work? It's still a fulfilling experience because as I mentioned, the the experience in itself where you are emotionally and physically investing your efforts into an individual who will grow up and potentially be successful in the future and his success equates to yours, is in itself fulfilling and satisfying. Right. Um, now to move on to the, to the fact that why... Um, to, to clarify the high esteem that motherhood holds, right? So we need to understand that mothers are more physically and emotionally invested in their children as compared to her male counterparts. Um, and this is this then results when a mother is personally taking care of, of the children, rather it be an adopted parent, rather it be whatever kind of parent, as long as that female parent is in charge of the kid herself and she is taking care of that kid, 
you are going to get successful individuals rather than individuals who have been deprived of maternal care simply because their mothers knew that, that ha being having kids and staying at home and, and doing that level of uh, contribution is demeaning and degraded upon and they had to conform to societal standards which is not what we are striving for. So we really need to understand the fundamentals of this thing that we are not demeaning any other experiences in life. We are not saying that you cannot go out and, and have and experience any other sort of thing. We are just saying that if you choose to stay and be a mother, that is an experience. Yes. Because I'm a mother, I'm not able to do certain things, such as go out and work 9 to 5 every day. But I want to do those things. So is my being a mother, which, which is restricting me from doing things that I want to do, is giving me a fulfilling experience or not? Right. You see, it is your choice when you say that you are going to give up that career and have a kid. Nobody is saying that you cannot do both things, right? We are not saying that just because you are taking care of a kid, you are raising an individual, you cannot have a career. That is perfectly possible and mothers do that, as our first speaker mentioned. You can have stay-at-home jobs, you can have online jobs, you can have flexible working hours which allow you to do both. In, in our modern era, companies and managers they're willing to they're willing to in certain situations accommodate that sort of thing and we need more of that to understand that motherhood actually holds a very high esteem and it should be encouraged and we are not to say that just because I'm I'm opting the road of motherhood I am restricted from everything else in life because we have seen multiple examples around us where women have multiple kids not just one multiple kids and they still go out and they're still successful in other areas of life and for all these reasons that we have presented to you, we proudly propose this motion. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, we think it's kind of irresponsible for them to tell us what is a fulfilling experience when they didn't really tell us what it was, what, what fulfilling experience means in the first place, right? Um, and on the second point, we believe that there's a difference between the things that you can do and the th things that you want to do. If you can't do the things that, want, that you want to do for you to live a life happy, self-realization, self-actualization, all of that, because you have a baby, or because you are a mother, we don't think that it is a fulfilling life. We're not saying that everyone, we're not, apart from choice, right? Then this further goes on into my extension, but I believe that there's a very important thing, distinction between the things, the choices that you can make and the choices that you want to make, right? So please uh, keep that in mind. Let's look at the government's logic so far. So. They really had one argument, right? That motherhood is a fulfilling experience, whatever that means, because they have they give uh, they give birth to human beings and they turn out to be positive, con uh, productive members into society. We think that there's two things hugely wrong with that line of argument. First, it, because that means that women have no other way of contributing to society except to give babies and give birth, so that they turn into productive members of society. Right? And secondly, we believe Shame. that you had two speeches to prove otherwise. You didn't. So I don't know. Raise POIs then. Um, and secondly, we believe that the, this notion of motherhood, regardless of how they try to portray it, right? we don't think motherhood in itself is absolutely a fulfilling experience. right? Because my partner told you that you could be in motherhood with all these other external factors that still might not make life happy for you. Right? That still might not make Sir. life as fulfilling as you once thought it would be. Right? And, okay, then what about, like, like, let me give you an extreme example. What if your kid turns into a criminal? Right? Is that still a fulfilling experience under their definitions? No. Like, so we, we see that their analysis, it's not only generalizing everyone that gives birth, as, or only the first people that give birth as contributing, fulfilling members of society, but not only that, their generalization, generalization doesn't even stand in the first place, right? They, she talked, uh, the second speaker talked about how you can have a kid and work. Okay, yes, maybe that's true. However, we believe, like my partner said, in most cases, in most developing countries where there is no maternity leave, far less a paternity, paternity leave, most women are prevented from high levels in the workplace because they have a children. Why? Because they get pregnant for nine months and because after they get pregnant, it's not like they can come to work the next day, right? We believe that once you have not just one, but two, but several kids, when you start a family, it's, you know, it's statistically proven that less women can work, that less women are work in the workplace because they have kids, right? If I'm a single mother that's going to, then that's doing two things and I need to work 
14 hours a day to get this promotion, but no, there's no one to pick up my kid from school, right? Then, you know, sure. no thank you. Then we don't think, you know, then the work that you do and the kid that you have at home, we don't think that the woman can balance that out as effectively as other people who don't have children, Sir. like men. Sir. No thank you. Um, all right, let's get into my own substantive. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that, no thank you. I'm going to tell you that mothers, they're, they deserve the utmost respect in the world. We believe that mothers give birth to a living human being, right? And like they said, the emotional bond, the physical bond between the child and the mother, we believe is very, very strong. That when that, and it's, and not many, in not many cases, that bond is broken. And we believe that precisely because of that, it prevents the mother from having a fulfilling life. We believe that once you have a child and you give love and support and you raise the child and you see it growing up, you're there when he gets sick, you're there when he, you know, is crying, you, you, know, you, you love him, right? You, you're raising him and what you're doing is you're constantly putting the child's well-being first, right? It forces you, the mother or the parent, to make sacrifices because you want to, right? And because you, your life becomes doing everything to provide Sorry. the best possible outcome for, you, for that child rather than what's best for you, right? A case in point, if, I'm uh, if someone is pregnant, they probably won't smoke or drink while they're pregnant, even if they want to. Sir. No thank you. Parents spend their life savings, like my parents, to send their stupid kid to an expensive university, right? We think that these things kind of show how the mother's life becomes how bringing the greatest happiness and safety for their child, not necessarily for, them for themselves. Sir. No, thank you. And we believe that this is very problematic because even if they say they want to, this is very problematic. Why? Because they will always want to, right? There's no scenario in where they won't want to do what's best for their kid so that they can put their interests before their kid's own, right? And secondly, even if they don't want to, they can't really opt out of that responsibility, right? If I don't, even if I don't want to take care of my kid anymore, there's nothing, there's really nothing I can do. Right? They can't send me to send the, their kid to an orphanage after ra raising them for two, three years. Except, you know, when they, when they're really l running out of funds to to raise their kid. Right? Sir. I'll take. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, to stop your straw man argument here, when you have all of us have a lot of things that we want, but however, we need to prioritize these things. So, if women choose maternity as her top priority. Why do you object on this? We're not objecting that. We're objecting your narrative that they can't have a fulfilling life unless they become a mother, right? That's, I think that's what our whole case has been about, right? We're saying that women don't necessarily have to be uh, a mother to have a fulfilling life. And motherhood in itself, even if you become a mother, you may not live a fulfilling life. Motherhood may not be a fulfilling experience. Let's go back to my own argument. Um, why is why is this why is caring put, putting your child's interest before you uh, problematic? Because there's no scenario in which you will never want to. And secondly, even if you don't want to, you can't really opt out of that responsibility, right? If I decide I want to have a career at Goldman Sachs because I was interning there five years ago, but I have a kid, then I can't really you know opt out to put that kid elsewhere, divert my attention into f f uh, into my into my career. And I'm not saying. The distinction only lies between the career and the child. We're saying that that distinction, that choice, should be left up to the individual. And no, no one, no person, no entity should, be, should tell me how I achieve my fulfilling life, right? Whether that's parenthood, whether that's motherhood. Um, what happens then? Then we, we believe that mothers will call it fulfilling, even you know, if they truly believe so, we believe that they're eventually settling for happiness over their family. They're playing happiness over of, of their child above their own happiness. And we don't think that's uh, very, a very fulfilling life. We don't think that even if the mother is happy, we think that the mother is sacrificing greater happiness that she could have achieved because of, of uh, because she had a kid. So while mothers are amazing uh, human beings that should be respected, we believe that motherhood does not lead to uh, a fulfilling life. Thank you. Well, the problem that we face on the closing side of closing government is that in order for true choice to be given to the woman, a narrative that represents the truth should be 
uh, a portrait in society. The women should be exposed to this narrative that truly represents the truth. And that is what we're going to argue about. Um, so, um, what, what, what we have a problem with by preventing the narrative that motherhood is a fulfilling experience from spreading, uh, from being pushed, is that uh, it undermines the contribution that women have to society, right? Because we have to agree to the fact that the status quo uh, is a patriarchal society, which means that women have an inherent push to, I mean, they are inherently pushed towards motherhood, right? What I mean by this is that sometimes it's obligatory, ob obligatory for women to, be, uh, to take up motherhood. Sometimes indirectly, they are pushed towards motherhood. What I mean by this is that there is a pressure of expectation to be a mother, or there is a risk of uh, being, uh, I mean, risk of motherhood every time a woman indulges in sexual activity, or the lack of abortion uh, available to women means that uh, they are, again, pushed towards motherhood, and and like, like, like also, uh, if a woman's raped, again, she is uh, put in the risk of pregnancy, right? So we live in a society where motherhood is something that women are inherently pushed towards. Given that this is the case, we feel that it is important to um, no, it, it is important to acknowledge the fact that the motherhood indeed is a fulfilling experience, so as to not undermine the contribution of the women to society. Now, going on to a few refutations, right? So, what we heard from uh, uh, opposition uh, is that it is indeed not a fulfilling experience, and I'll go more on that in our extension. Uh, and then they th talk about how it undermines gay parents, foster parents, uh, and it's all these, right? We're telling you, no, we're telling you that it doesn't undermine in any way because what we're arguing on our side of the house is not that it is the only fulfilling experience or that motherhood is more fulfilling than perhaps working, uh, uh, working, right? We're telling that it indeed is a fulfilling experience and therefore there is no priority uh, assigned and that point does not stand. And you try to um, argue saying that uh, motherhood Sometimes the fact that this narrative exists in society prevents the mo woman from uh, from taking maybe pursuing other jobs or other fulfillment, right? So we're telling you that all while motherhood is indeed a fulfilling experience, this is not reason enough for them to pursue other more ful fulfilling experiences. And now let me move on to my substantive, which is the yes. I'll take your point. Just because something is inevitable, does it mean it's automatically a fulfilling experience? Okay, I can clarify this for you as I move on to this very point, which is about the fulfilling rest. You talked about how women sacrifice um, a lot in uh, this, and we feel that this is true. We feel that there's a disproportionate uh, amount of investment uh, that women do have in case of motherhood. But let us look at it in a different way, right? What motherhood indeed is, is that a, wom a woman is investing a lot into producing uh, a commodity that you can l look the child as, right? What this means is that there is a lot of investment put put in in producing this commodity, which is the child, and every uh, every every step in the ch uh, life of the child is nothing but a reward that the woman derives from it. And what I mean by this is that perhaps the first steps that the child takes, maybe the first step. Uh, the first time they begin to speak, uh, or them achieving, them graduating, them get, getting married, and all these are nothing but rewards that women derive from this investment that they do. So we're telling you that this is not... Sir. Sir. Yeah. If you're forced to put someone else's well-being before your happiness and well-being, would you call that a fulfilling life? Which is what I'm trying to explain, which is that you are not forced to do this, right? Just look at it in a way that you painted a work of art, right? This is something that you have invested it because you because of the rewards that you would derive from it. And that is why we feel that uh, this is the fulfillment that we are talking about on our side of the house. And we feel that this, uh, this reward investment system uh, ensures that um, it is not, it, like, it's not preventing you from uh, 
pursuing other things uh, and things like that. Why do we feel that it is important for such such a narrative that motherhood uh, uh, leads to a fulfilling experience to be uh, to be to exist in society, right? And why is it distinct from perhaps fatherhood? This is simply because of the fact that there is disproportionate investment. Um, by the woman in bringing up a child in terms of maybe just the gestation, the emotional investment, nursing, let alone um, the uh, physical attachment and the efforts taken in, in bringing up the child. And we also feel that the, due to the high so, uh, rates of maybe social detachment by the uh, fathers, this is how it distinguishes uh, this per, from perhaps fatherhood, and this is why we feel it is important. Now, pushing uh, such a narrative in society can come with great benefit, right? Some of the benefits include the fact that it encourages people to pursue motherhood. That is, that if I'm confused about this commitment uh, into being a mother, this this fact that it is fulfilling enough is incentive for me to pursue it. It helps a mother who is pregnant to continue it, to be motivated to continue to term and uh, indeed bring up the child. It also encourages uh, families to stay together. This means that th there would be eventually a drop in the divorce-driven fall, uh, fall in childcare. What it means is that, I mean, this might put a question whether as to uh, they are pressured uh, into doing this, right? That's where we make the distinction that while the narrative does say that it is indeed a fulfilling experience, we are not arguing for the fact that this is the most fulfilling experience, and hence it's it's not a source of pressure for women who who just want to pursue their career and not even become a mother to uh, to pursue motherhood just because of this narrative. And for all these reasons, we are proud to. First of all, this debate has gone completely off track. Why? This debate is whether the narrative that uh, motherhood is fulfilling is a good thing or not. It's not whether motherhood is fulfilling or not. Now, we can see that motherhood can be fulfilling at times, it can't be at other times. We really don't care, that is not where we're debating. What we're debating is whether the narrative is a good thing or not. We needed to make that clarification at first. My two main points of extension are how this affects society at large and not just mothers, and second of all, how this affects the relationship between mothers and their children, and how it is extremely dangerous to that relationship. But before I go on, two points of rebuttal. First of all, OG's entire case was that m uh, women cannot be mothers because they are oppressed into conforming to society and getting jobs. First of all, that maybe, maybe, to a certain degree happens in developed countries where we have radical feminist ideologies telling women that you have to get a job to be useful, but in developing countries that is not the case at all, where their narrative is the one that is being pushed extensively and we see how dangerous that is. So, first of all, there is a big difference in the effect of this narrative between developed and developing nations in the way that they view women. So, in developing uh, sorry, in developed nations, if we do what they're doing, so they're only trying to attack that small portion of radical feminists that believe that women have to have jobs or else they're useless. They are not society at large. They are not everyone, right? So they're doing all of this, and it has a lot of uh, uh, side effects that are extremely dangerous, like I will highlight, just to combat that little bit of rhetoric that we're getting from these people. Second of all, in developing nations, this sort of uh, line is already taken and it has already had a lot of bad effects on women and on their place in society, which I will highlight throughout my speech. Moving to closing government, um, it was m a lot of the same, but at the end they told us that this sort of narrative can keep family toge families together and can make, uh, I don't know, people happier. but. Uh, they didn't tell us why this is a good thing inherently, and we don't think they will do this to begin with. So, moving on. How does this affect society? We need to look at what do narratives do. In our opinion, narratives can shape public opinion, right? And so, 
The idea is that when you create so much attachment between motherhood and women, you're reducing women into only mothers, right? Motherhood is beautiful, we all agree, but we can't say that women are only mothers. That is extremely dangerous. Mm. On our side of the house, we're running for the notion that women are strong enough to be both and that they can have nine to five jobs, they need, don't need to work online, and they, they can be amazing mothers at the same time. The only thing we're, that we're saying is that if we keep pushing this narrative, we're only going to harm them. So why? First of all, all of what has been going on in the past few decades of empowering women has been on the assumption that women are not only mothers. So when we're pushing this narrative, we're com going completely in reverse, right? So we're trying to reverse everything that has been happening for decades. Second of all, Historically, women have been seen as only mothers. And we know that historically women have not been empowered. So we want to go back a hundred years. That is just, I don't know why we would want to do that. Second of all, when we do this, if a mother does actually decide to get a job, and if they are able to get a job, then you're basically telling their employer of course, we're thinking of how this affects society as a whole. You're telling their employer that this woman is a mother first and your employee second. And so they won't get the raises, they won't get the promotions, I'll take you in a minute, and they won't be seen as given, giving 100% to that job. And so they won't be seen as useful enough to the job, and that, so you're impeding their entire progress. So instead of giving them choice and telling them motherhood is fine, you're telling society that they can only be mothers and that if they're anything else, they won't give you 100%. And this is even more dangerous in developing countries where the possibility of them getting a job is not that high to begin with. And so if you continue to run this narrative, you make it impossible for them to get a job, which is something that they can also seek fulfillment in. They can seek fulfillment in more than one avenue. Yes, sir. So, don't you see that the empowerment of women actually went off track by saying that not just motherhood is one fulfilling experience that they can have, but it actually demeaning them from having this experience, which is actually what we're trying to combat here. We're trying to put these Thank empowering you. movements you, back on track. Understood, understood. So, again, that I, I talked about this at the beginning. Some people are saying this. Yes, we do not agree with it, but we don't believe that it's major enough to do what you are doing, which, has a, which is much more dangerous to women. Finally, women and children. If we keep telling women that motherhood is fulfilling, we keep telling them that, it probably is, but if we keep running that rhetoric, then they're going to want to have kids for simply the sake of fulfillment. You're tired from work and you have a horrible job, get a kid. Your marriage is up in flames, get a kid, right? So that's how people see it as a solution. So when that happens, then there's so much pressure on the mother and on the child to make that relationship work. Your son has to be an engineer, your son has to be a doctor, or else you're a bad mother. And that puts so much pressure on the mother and the child alike, that it just makes the relationship impossible to work around. <coughs> Sir. Sir. No, thank you, no, thank you. So basically what we're doing is we're, we're forcing the mother to look for fulfillment everywhere in that relationship between her and her child. And so the, the purpose of having a child stops being to raise the child, it starts to being for selfish reasons to find fulfillment. And of course, we know that it, would, it can provide great fulfillment, right? But when we keep pushing these narratives, what we're, putting, what we're doing is we're putting high, very high standards. So the mother starts not only raising the child and if she gets some sort of return, it's good, which is something that we completely agree with, but they put such high standards that they accept fulfillment in every turn of that relationship and they want something out of it at all times, which is extremely dangerous. And this is even more dangerous in developing countries where women are shamed for not having uh, children and where their only contribution by society is it's seen as having that child and that if their child doesn't turn out to be amazing and a rocket scientist, then they've failed. And that is why we are very, very proud to oppose. Gentlemen. So today as a government, I'd like to sum up the debate from both the government and the opposition side. 
So the key argument that we have been having from the opposition side so far is that propagating motherhood takes away the so-called choice that the moms have to be a mother. But our refutation to that is that this is not a choice. You didn't choose to be a woman, and being a woman automatically implies that you have to give birth at some point in time to keep a species going. So the choice that they're talking about wasn't given to you when you were born as a woman. So what choice are you taking away when you're stopping motherhood or when you're not propagating this narrative? Our key argument so far has been that this is a degradation of the, the very idea of motherhood. Motherhood is something pure and revered and considered sacred. And by not propagating this narrative, you're taking away or disregarding that and bringing it down to a level where it can be considered a choice like the opposition showed us. Um, before I move on to my speech, I'd like to review some of the arguments which came from the uh, speaker before me. Firstly, he said that... Uh, no, I'll take you later. Uh, firstly, he said that uh, the second speaker uh, from the opposition challenged that happiness that the moms get, like they, they always put their happiness before the happiness of the others. And how is that ever going to be a fulfilling thing? Well, guys, you are not moms. Ask moms. The most fulfilling things that they ever experience is seeing their child grow and putting their happiness before others. It is a psychological thing. We're created that way. Women are created that way. I think you can like confirm this from any mom. She gets most happiness out of that sort of happiness. So it is a fulfilling life. I'll take it later. Uh, secondly, just because um, this is inevitable, it doesn't mean a full, it, they said that it is inevitable, so does it mean that it is a fulfilling experience if it is inevitable and you have to do it? It is not always a full, fulfilling, maybe something like something is inevitable and you have to do it anyway, then it may not be a fulfilling experience always. But here, the context of this debate is about motherhood. That is inevitable, but it's an exceptional case where it also happens to be fulfilling. So you can't That's just spoil that. Yeah, I'll take you. I'll, I'll take you. Yes. With me or? Okay. Yeah, her. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell me what my fulfilling experience looks like? If not, then why make a narrative and apply to all women in the world? What I'm saying is that you can just say that something is, you're forced to do something and it's inevitable. It would never be a fulfilling experience. But we're talking about motherhood here and you can confirm it from the mothers that it is the most fulfilling. This is an exceptional case. You can't just generalize, take something out of context and put it here. This is an exception to that. Motherhood is special. Uh, so I would like to repeat some of the points that came from the other side. Uh, he said that uh, creating attachment to the mother-child duo is harmful for the development or whatever. And he also brought up the feminism empowerment issue. But what the issue here is that you're stereotyping the, you know, like, who asked you to look at the mother-child duo as mom has to be only mom or only worker, it's her choice. So by applying this to that, you are applying your feministic oh, no. views on that. So feminism essentially means women are given the right to choose. And if they have the right to choose, they can choose to be a mom plus a worker, or that's up to them. So this is not what feminism is about, whatever you brought up. I'm not taking you. Then he also said that it is impossible to get a job because they have to be moms at some point. Uh, but we think that this issue has other solutions like if you if, if it is impossible for you to continuously be in a job because you have to be mom at some point then we have issues sorry we have solutions really in life where government gives maternity leaves and stuff like that so that you can sit at home and give your child due attention and time this is not the way taking away or not propagating the idea of motherhood is not the solution to this issue I know. Not, no, I'm not taking you guys um, I have some more abitos but I'd be better getting on with my speech. Okay, so um, the key arguments that came from the opposition side so far is that this is a disenfranchisement of the right of women to choose between a choice to do work and stay at home. And the second, the big question right now we have to answer is, is motherhood a fulfilling experience? Is the narrative of motherhood really a fulfilling experience? And we are saying you that yes, it is the most fulfilling experience ever. A mom who had to go through a lot of pain, nine months of gestation period and give birth to a child, that's going to be the most fulfilling experience is to see the child, the labor pain that she goes through, the most fulfilling thing for her, I'm not taking you guys, is to see the child come out and grow up and develop and be a successful human being. So it is a fulfilling experience by design and them arguing that it's not a fulfilling experience is not valid. Madam? No. I'm not taking you guys, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, now, um, the other points that they stated is that telling women they should become mom is taking over the choice. I said that and then they said, the fulfilling experience thing. Then they also said the part patriarchal concept thing. 
So basically in developing countries, we have this notion that working is the big thing. What if you don't work? The basic idea that working is everything, you have to work, you have to earn for your family, that is a patriarchal idea. So if you're saying that in patriarchal countries, this would be used as a whatever target or this would be used as a mechanism in developing countries is not valid because well, the idea, the very idea that you have to work to be independent is a patriarchal concept. So the, the first, second speaker from the opening, her argument is self-contradictory. Just one. Yeah, you can. <laughs> what, if, what if a mother gives birth to a child that has a severe disability that requires her to be with him or her 24-7? Do you think that that life for that mother would be fulfilling? Do you think that the mom is stupid enough to just not seek any help? She, she, can, she has other options, like go to a hospital, put the child in there, there are other options. You guys are limiting this debate to a typical mom who is going to do everything a mom does. Guys, this is 21st century, moms do more things than just taking care of a child. Okay, so um, some of the arguments that came from the closing, uh, or my first speaker, is that um, motherhood is different from fatherhood, moms care more, so by, uh, like, for example, the process of mom, okay, there is male and female, so the male invests so much more to the basically bringing up the child, so this investment has to have some return, it's like a give and take policy, and this return by psychological or biological design is the fulfillment that they get out of it. So to keep the system going, mom has a very strong bond to the child, and we are gonna, like, this is, by promoting this narrative, this is a mechanism to increase that bond to make sure that families go, that our species exist, and we keep going, actually. And then, um, yeah, so this is a basically a reward mechanism. And then the opening government also said that degrading the idea of motherhood, no, no mind. Yeah, mother should be given a right to choose. And uh, they also said that it's an emotional, physical attachment to the child that automatically makes it um, a very rewarding experience. And then the last and the most important point of this debate, I think, is that this statement is inherently true, that motherhood is the most fulfilling experience, is by design so true that we have to, we are getting nothing out of not propagating it. So for all of these reasons, we think that it has to be propagated, and that's why we're reading this debate. Okay, I'll take them speech by speech uh, to finish. Uh, <laughs> okay, first they kept talking about society. Now, first question, what society? Societies are many, and they differ. Okay, so f that's, uh, this is part of my, my, uh, what my partner has covered, which is that developing nations are uh, different from developed nations, and not all developed nations are the same. In their model, they're only talking about a small portion of society where radical feminists have pushed the idea that motherhood is something that is less valuable than having a career. That motherhood is less independence. You need to be an independent woman, and a career is an independent woman's path. So they're, what they're trying to say is that like, they didn't define what society are we talking about. And pushing this narrative in all societies is something very, very dangerous to all societies equally, in a way. Uh, this is what we tried to prove. They, kept, uh, they said that society sees women as oppressed. And that, uh, and that women are oppressed because they have to choose their careers. Now, apart from that society's different point, how are you different? They kept telling us they're giving the women the choice. But when you're pushing this narrative, you're not giving them the choice, you're pushing just another narrative, just another fulfillment narrative, because career can be fulfilling, and some people are pushing their career fulfillment narrative. What about what you're trying to push is the mother fulfillment narrative. So you're not giving them a choice, you're just like the career people, you're just pushing another, no thank you, you're just pushing another narrative on women, so you're not giving them a choice, you're actually trying to make them conform to a new society that you're trying to create where motherhood is encouraged and pushed for. So you're not giving them a choice, you're actually just like the career people. This is point number one. Point number two, they said that uh, women will be able to, uh, like, uh, the same lines that we hear from also the people who push for the career fulfillment, which is that you will be able to contribute to society. You're, uh, but what the career people are saying, that you will be a, a productive member, what they're saying, you'll actually bring in productive members. So we're not exactly seeing also that big a difference. And they said about how it's a long-term co contribution. 
which also brings me to another part, which is what the, the debate has been going on about, is motherhood fulfilling or not? We don't care. It, ha it can be fulfilling, it can be, we don't care. We're actually trying to say, is that narrative effective? Is that narrative good for women? Is that narrative make society a better place? Exactly. Well, no, thank you. So the debate has been going on, uh, no, thank you. And this is what we got from the web speech of the government who talked nothing about our extensions or our points and kept trying to prove that motherhood is fulfilling. This is not even like, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> then the third speaker came here to say that we live in a society where women are pushed to motherhood. And this is a quote. I have no idea, like, uh, like, uh, um, w w like, is that a different society from the opening government society? And, like, uh, okay. Then they kept, they told us how uh, women invest in their children and they expect a reward. And this is our own extension. Like, we expected the web to come here and defend their extension and defend what the reward system and mechanism that they talked about by attacking our problem with the reward mechanism. But they didn't do that. So let's iterate what we actually said about what is wrong with investing in the child and expecting a reward. What is wrong with that is that their expectations are very high because you're pushing this narrative, you're telling women it is fulfilling, it is fulfilling, it is, it is fulfilling. So when they have a child, they expect the fulfillment back. So when they look at the child, they don't see motherhood as uh, like ups and downs where they, you can struggle with your kid, where your kid can get uh, sick or uh, your kid can fail at school because he doesn't like school. They only look so for the, no thank you, they only look for the reward, for the return on their investment, for their fulfillment. This is dangerous because it is not how raising a child works. It's not always rewards. It can, you have, actually, it actually mostly not rewards. You will have to give a lot in, and expect a, very little. So what they're pushing, with, no thank you. Sir. When they push this narrative, it's actually diff difficult and dangerous for the relationship between a woman and her child because it tells the woman that you are supposed to expect rewards. No thank you. Then the third speaker came to talk about trying to distinguish motherhood from fatherhood. Okay. And then he talked about how we should incentivize women to have kids and to, we should encourage family. and this way like, it's a benefit of encouraging families to stay together. We don't know how will that happen and why is that a good thing. Okay, but uh, these are main points. Okay, P.Y. Yes. You're basing your own extension on an assumption that they, that they need. Okay, where's, where's the result? Where's the result? No, any positive improvement in the life of that child it reflects happiness and reflects rewards for, for this mother. So okay, what if this child like, is a screw up? Will they, like, what will they do about this child? What, this is what we're trying to say. You don't have to expect rewards. This is not what motherhood is about. And even if, like, rewards, we, we agree that rewards will happen. But the main problem with pushing this narrative is that you raise the standards very high that women expect a lot. This is the problem. Like, the narrative exists, and many women believe that motherhood is fulfilling, but it, Pushing this narrative and empowering it and encouraging women to have children, and uh, uh, this raises the stakes, this raises the standards. Sir. Now, okay, go ahead. Sir, we're not saying that under this narrative we are setting the standards for anything. We're, what we're propagating for is saying that in societies where motherhood is demeaned, when a mother chooses it, we are saying it is okay and it should be acceptable, it should not be stigmatized, and the mother should not be conformed okay. to societal okay. First standards. First of all, okay. First of all, uh, these societies, as we said, are, are very small portions. What about the societies where women are shamed if they don't have children? What about the societies where women are seen, seen as heroes if they have a children and hold on to a career? Society is a very general world, and you have to specify which society and society is different. If pushing this narrative, for example, in Afghanistan is not the same as pushing it in Germany. Uh, so th uh, this is uh, point number one. Point number uh, so like for, uh, so as I said, societies uh, differ and. Uh, <clears throat> you, uh, what you were trying to say in attacking that women should take a career path uh, be, uh, and that society is forces them to take this path, what you're trying to do is make a new society where women are also forced into a different alternative path, which is motherhood. No, 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 thank you. Uh, so just to cover... Uh, <clears throat> uh, I think the web also said something about uh, that being a woman means you have to have children and uh, like... Uh, not necessarily. Okay, uh, now like to just sum up real quick what we had uh, to offer in this debate. We said that, that society is different. We said that narratives in different uh, places are different. We said that in a patriarchal society, specifically, or even in a society where women are somehow empowered, pushing this narrative will mean difficulties in the workplace, will mean difficulties in, uh, in the women's life because they will perceive first as, as mothers, but we push this narrative so they will be seen first as mothers. When they are seen first as mothers, they will be treated as uh, a member of society who is not putting all the power in, and men will be seen as the ones who are actually putting all this, uh, all the like 100% of their effort in their job or their uh, position. 
this point number one, we talked about, we talked about the relationship between a woman and her child, and how pushing this narrative will raise the stakes and will raise the standards of women, and how it will uh, make the, uh, the relationship not rewarding but selfish. Thank you very much.